details, Mr. Speaker. Order. We need a new government. Order. Order. Uh, the the Hon. Um, David Bennett. Mr Speaker, I was going to start with, uh, my speech feeling sorry for the Labor Party, but after that last member said that they're a party of fresh ideas, I, I thought it was time to laugh at the Labor Party because um, the Labor Party is in big trouble. They are in massive trouble. They are a party that is in tatters. They are a party that is being destroyed by the principled Green Party that sits to their side. And, um, and frankly, the Labor Party should take well, its chance now and merge with yeah, the Green Party while you actually have a little bit of semblance of credibility left of what the Labor Party actually stood for. Winston Peters in this parliament always talks about parties and what they stood for when they first came in. I'd love to see the Labor Party actually stand for, up for what it believes in. When was the last time we saw a Labor Party that was actually understanding of all New Zealanders? When was, I don't know if it was. I don't know. Go back further. When was the last time we saw a Labor Party that actually went out there and supported New Zealanders? 72 is the answer again. When was the last time we saw a Labor Party actually go out there and vote for a budget when they were in opposition? Never. Never. And why would they not vote for this budget when the Greens could, even New Zealand First could vote for this budget? But the Labor Party couldn't. And Mr Speaker, it is because the Labor Party does not understand New Zealanders. The Labor Party doesn't even understand itself. They can't even work out what their strategy is. The Labor Party is hooked on the mentality of neoliberalism and all those academic concepts that come from a party that are based in a Wellington environment and have no concept outside of this room of what makes New Zealanders tick and what is required for this country going forward. And let's have a look at some of the great articles we've seen in the paper in the last day or so about the Labor Party. John Armstrong. Labor is fast becoming a political cock case. That's a great article. Great headline, isn't it? I just want to read a quote from that article. Labor is fast becoming a political cock case. The budget has simply served as another stage for yet another episode of Labor's continuing comedy of errors. That comedy of errors started many years ago, but I actually... In my, in my pity for the Labor Party, I actually want to show some pity for Sue Moroni as well, because she was subject to that comedy of areas this year in the Labor Party list ranking, right. and it was terrible the way the Labor Party treated somebody that had worked hard for them in Hamilton for many years and then just dumped them um, unceremoniously through this parliamentary process. It goes on to say... The decision made by the Greens New Zealand First to vote in favour of the legislation enacting the budget centre police, $2 billion package of tax cuts, increases in working for families entitlements and major boosts in accommodation supplement left Labour in not so splendid isolation. Oh, no. It was somewhat all bizarre. Labour's intended allies pulled the rug from under Labour's criticism of a policy package which would slot comfortably into Labor's manifesto. Labor will not back what its people demand and require just because of politics. We cannot trust the Labor Party. The Labor Party will only say what people want to hear. They won't actually say what they want to do. We see this time and time again on tax. Tax is a great example of the Labor Party's pro promise to the New Zealand public, but its own internal division. Only a year or two ago, the Labor Party came and said, no more capital gains tax, no more capital gains tax under its leadership. That's a debate that hasn't been settled within the Labor Party. The finance spokesperson of the Labor Party wants to have a capital gains tax. The other one is income tax. This year, Andrew Little came out and said, no to income tax increases. There's not going to be no income tax increases under Labor. After this budget, he came out and opened the door for tax cut increases. The Labor Party says one thing, and they believe another thing, and they would do another thing if they ever got a chance. Do not trust them, New Zealand. We cannot trust a party that will not actually stand in this House and say what they believe and stick to their principles. The principles of the Labor Party are gone.
They've gone and they've been a treasure to that party that has been lost to this House and lost to parliaments um, through the New Zealand history going forward because the true opposition now is the Green Party, not the Labour Party. And if ever we needed support for that is the other article I want to quote, and that is from Peter Dunn. Now, I'm not inclined to quoting Peter Dunn very often. It's not really my, my thing, but um, Peter Dunn says this. He says, I have belonged to Liberal Democratic United Future, or the United Party as previously known. Prior to that, however, I spent more than 22 years as a member of the Labour Party. If anyone knows what the Labour Party is about, it's Peter Dunn. And the crux of what he said here. He said, well, he says, the Labour Party is vastly different from the party I joined as a university student, or even that which New United Future supported on confidence and supply matters. Labour appears these days to be against everything and for nothing. That's, right. That's what they are. They're against everything and for nothing. Tell us what they stand for. What would Labour do? What's Labour's budget? Where would Labour spend the money? If it's not going to spend money on people needing more accommodation, if it's not going to spend on families in New Zealand, where's Labour going to spend the money? Where? where? I tell you, it's on their union mates. That's where it's going to go. That's what the Labour Party wants to do. They won't spend it on New Zealanders. It says, Whatever the effect is that the Labour image is more and more out of time and irrelevant. Right. Never a true word said by Peter Dunn. But it goes on and it says this, and this is the heart of it for all those students up here today. Remember these words, OK, because this is the heart of the Labour Party. For its part, Labour still tr seems trapped by having a singular view of the world which they believe voters will come to accept then embrace once they hear more of it. That is what the Labour Party will tell all the young people in New Zealand. They will say, we have a vision of the world that is right. As voters, all you need to do is just hear it, listen, understand and believe it. That's the Labour Party and that's what they actually believe. The strange thing is that the Labour Party members in this House actually believe that. That's why they never voted for the budget, because they think they're above this place. They think they're above New Zealanders. They think they've, they've got some, some destined position to tell everybody what is right and what is wrong. They won't listen to people, and they're nodding their heads in favour. I know, Poto, you're nodding your head in favour. I know it's what you believe. Um, just tell New Zealanders next time at election. Don't have to go out there and not say it. It's going to be more believable if the Labour Party actually said what it believed and not went out there and tried to, to just be against everything. Farf knows. Oh, Farf knows a lot about the Labour Party. Yeah. We go on. In, in this world, compromise and pragmatism are unwelcome dirty words, lest they dilute the true message. See, the Labour Party believes it has a message that everybody will agree upon. It's like communism. They believe that communism will be happen. They believe that it's the way. And then they expect everybody to come in behind. Why don't the Labour Party actually go out there and start listening to New Zealanders, working with New Zealanders, be with all parts of the New Zealand countryside, whether it's in Hamilton, Auckland or in Vicargill, be with all parts of the New Zealand working environment. Be with all the New Zealanders that may not be working. Don't just represent the unions and your union mates. Don't just represent a group of academics that think they know better than everybody else. Represent all New Zealanders and what all New Zealanders can achieve. And until the Labour Party gets back to their roots and is actually a political party that you can identify with, is a viable opposition. The Labour Party will always be on that side of the House and in the next election the Labour Party won't be sitting in those seats. They'll be sitting in those seats there with the Green, the Green Party sitting now. The Green Party will come into these seats here. The Green Party has young members coming in. They've got new ideas. They've got people that are passionate about New Zealand, the Labour Party is old, it's tired and it won't tell the truth about what it believes and what it wants to see happen. 
And well, the New Zealand First Party, they shouldn't actually talk in this House. That's half their problem, is that they stand up and say something. We all know the New Zealand First Party <laughs> about them. You know, the New Zealand First Party, and listen to this, young people, the New Zealand First Party wants to take New Zealand back to 1955. Right. They, think never, they think New Zealand never got any better than 1955. If you go back to 1955, that's the best days of New Zealand under the New Zealand First Party. And um, that, well, it was when Winston was at his prime, but um, it was at, well, most of their party were actually at their prime then. But, um, Mr. Speaker, this is a serious day when we look at the demise of the Labour Party. A once serious opposition that now has become the third party right. the in this House. time has expired. Oh. Mr. Speaker. Oh. Um, Mr. No, Speaker. Uh, the member's spoken. Ron Mark has spoken in this debate. I've been. Uh, point, of point, of, point of order. No, my, my record shows that the uh, member has spoken in this debate. Yeah, it's true, but we allocate well, two, two slots. No, you only debate. get one. You can only speak once. Oh, God, it's, there was gold. So I'm calling up Simon O'Connor. Fortuitous that uh, National Trump's New Zealand.